the rate of forward reaction and the rate of backward reactions are modified to reach the equilibrium position of equilibrium will be changed where the stress is getting to minimized so this is the principle of lechak here wherever the stress is getting minimized the direction of the reaction will move towards that side the forward reaction and also the backward reaction or the reverse reaction is going to happen at the same time everyone this is harshita bhavasar from vidyashram school of excellence today i am going to start about session 4 from the chapter chemical equilibrium in the last session we have discussed about homogeneous equilibrium and heterogeneous equilibrium and factors affecting the equilibrium constants in this session we'll discuss about factors affecting equilibrium and what is the explanation for ionic equilibrium first factors affecting equilibrium in that lechatelier's principle what is that lechatelier's principle and how it is related to factors affecting equilibrium we'll see change of concentrations of reactant and product change of temperature and change of pressure of an equilibrium system are known as stresses on the system okay one system will be having one same temperature some pressure and some concentration if we keep on changing these three variables what will happen obviously the environment of the system will also change but it will not only change it will show as a stress on the system consider an equilibrium system in which the forward and reverse processes are occurring at the same rate same rate means same time the forward reaction and also the backward reaction or the reverse reaction is going to happen at the same time suppose that the system is subjected to a stress at that time stress is also been subjected then the rates of the opposing reactions may become unequal and the system is disturbed from its state of equilibrium at the same time the forward and reverse reactions are going to happen at that time stress is also subjected to those kind of reactions what will happen the two opposing rates will also become unequal and the system becomes completely disturbed until it reached equilibrium the system responds by shifting itself to another position of the equilibrium where the rates of the reactions are again equalized if that is in the case what will happen the direction of the reaction shift will by itself why it will shift the reaction because to attain equilibrium and also its position of the equilibrium will also change the rate of forward reaction and the rate of backward reactions are modified to reach the equilibrium again itself the reaction forward reaction and the reverse reaction will get modified because our destination is to reach the equilibrium so it will be modified to reach the equilibrium next if the new equilibrium is shifted to the right then there is an increased concentration of products comparative to reactants if the new equilibrium is shifted to right then the concentration of products will be more than reactants if new equilibrium is shifted to the left then there is an increased in concentration of reactants comparative to the product the effect of temperature pressure and concentration on the position of equilibrium of a reversible reaction can be predicted qualitatively by lechatelier's principle these three variables of a reversible reaction can be qualitatively predicted by this lechatelier's principle the principle states that if an equilibrium system is subject to a stress then the system will respond by shifting itself to another position of an equilibrium in such a way that effects of stress are minimized okay whenever we are also having some problem we will reach towards where the problem is get minimized like that whenever the reaction is under more stress position of equilibrium will be changed where the stress is getting to minimized so this is the principle of lechatelier the overall concept of stress on the system and response by the system is if addition of reactants equilibrium shift to right if removal of reactants shift towards left addition of product 
shift towards left. Removal of product, shift towards right. Increase of pressure, shift in the direction of decreased number of moles. Means where the number of moles is less, then towards that side, the equilibrium will shift. Decrease of pressure, shift in the direction of increased number of moles. Increase of temperature, K decreases if delta H decrease than 0, that is exothermic reaction and K increases if delta H, that is enthalpy is greater than 0, that is endothermic reaction. When this equilibrium constant decreases, when change in enthalpy is less than 0, this equilibrium constant will increase, change in enthalpy is more than 0, means that will be endothermic and another will be exothermic. You know what is endothermic and endothermic reactions. These are the stress on the system and response by the system. According to Le Chatelier's principle, if a system at equilibrium is subjected to a change of any of the factors such as temperature, pressure or concentration, the system adjusts itself in such a way so as to nullify the effect of that change. That is the equilibrium system shifts in that direction that tends to undergo the effect of change. This is what the Le Chatelier's principle are going to tell. We know that wherever the stress is getting minimized, the direction of the reaction will move towards that side. How it will be? Stress will be going to happen because of change in temperature, pressure and concentration. Okay. And effect of addition of inert gas. These are the other effects. The response by the system upon the addition of an inert that is non-reactive gas to the equilibrium system depends on delta N, difference between the number of moles of products and reactants and also on whether the addition is made at constant volume or constant pressure. If they are going to add the addition of inert gas and that overall equilibrium system will depend on delta N that is difference of number of moles present in product side as well as reactant side. And the addition is made at the constant volume or at constant pressure. When it will be added? At constant volume or constant pressure is present. See here, type of the reaction. This is effect of addition of inert gas to the equilibrium system. In the type 1 reaction, delta N equal to 0. Means the moles will be, difference between moles of will be 0. Equilibrium is not affected either at constant pressure or at constant volume. Here, equilibrium is not at all disturbed. In type 2, if delta N equal to positive, at constant volume, equilibrium is not affected. At constant pressure, equilibrium shifts to the right. If number of moles is positive side, then at the constant pressure, equilibrium will shift to the right side. For example, PCl5 will decompose into PCl3 plus Cl2. In the type 3 reaction, delta N equal to negative, at constant volume, equilibrium is not affected. At constant pressure, equilibrium shift to the left. Okay, N2 plus 3H2, 2NH3 that is ammonia. Here, at constant pressure, equilibrium shift to the left. Here, at constant pressure, equilibrium will shift to the right. But at the both the side, volume will not affect it. Okay, these are the three types of reaction in mean effect of addition of inert gas. Next. The equilibrium will be unaffected by the addition of the inert gas, a constant volume process. As I told, addition of inert gas, if we are going to do, constant volume will not affect it. By the addition of an inert gas at constant pressure, equilibrium will be shifted that direction in which there is increase in the number of gaseous moles. Where the gaseous moles are present more, there is the way to have the direction of the equilibrium. Next, effect of adding a catalyst. What will happen if they are adding a catalyst? Addition of a catalyst to a reversible reaction has no effect on the value of equilibrium constant. On the reverse reaction, if the addition of catalyst is going to happen, there will be no effect on the equilibrium constant. It neither changes the reaction quotient nor the equilibrium constant. There is no changes at all means, no changes in reaction quotient also and no reaction at equilibrium constant also. Thus a catalyst cannot alter the position of equilibrium 
it does the change the rates of both forward and reverse reaction to the same extent. Means what is catalyst? It will enhance the rate of a reaction or decreases the rate of a reaction but does not change the position of equilibrium. Here you have to understand, once again I am telling, catalyst will change the rate of a reaction either in a forward reaction or in a backward reaction but it does not show any changes in position of equilibrium. So it will not affect with equilibrium constant also and also reaction quotient also. Next relationship between equilibrium constant and standard free energy change. What is that relation delta G naught equal to minus 2.303 RT into log KC. Okay every constants you know this is standard free energy change and this is minus 2.303 R is gas constant, T is temperature, Kc at different concentrations, equilibrium constant. This relation is known as Wandt of reaction isotherm. This relation is very much important and it will be called as Wandt of reaction isotherm. If delta G naught is less than 0, then this equilibrium constant will be greater than 1. This means the reaction is spontaneous and that the reaction proceeds in forward direction to such an extent that the products are present predominantly. Means if standard free energy is less than 0 then will be equilibrium constant will be more than 1. The reaction will move in a forward direction and also it will be spontaneous. Another case if delta G naught is greater than 0 then Kc will be less than 1 this means the reaction proceeds in forward direction only to a small extent and the backward reaction is favored and very minute quantity of products is formed. Here products will be predominantly formed here products will be very small quantity will be formed seen here forward direction will be started but continued with backward direction products will be very less. If delta G equal to 0 then Kc equal to 1. This indicates that both reactants and products are equally favored and reaction has attained equilibrium. Here reactants and products are equally favored. Okay, These are the three cases and also the relationship between the equilibrium constant and the standard free energy. Next we will see some of the illustrations. Given a reaction A plus B will form 2C plus 3D. One mole of each A and B are heated in 2 dm cube container. At equilibrium 0.5 mole of A was found to remain in the equilibrium mixture. The equilibrium constant for the process in mole per dm cube is there is options 2.34, 1.6875, 4.96, 0.846. What will be the answer? We will see now. Initial concentration in moles, first in A also 1, in B also 1. Here we are seeing the initial concentrations, so there is no need of writing for the product. Next number of moles of at equilibrium, reacted 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that is also given in problem itself. Remaining 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, formed how much? 1.0 and 1.5. Volume 2 dm cube, then concentration of A equal to 0 0.52 divided by 2, concentration of B equal to 0 0.5 divided by 2, concentration of C 1 by divided by 2, concentration of D 1 by divided by 2, means product by reactant. This you know that. Okay, at equilibrium constant, these are the product by reactant. Okay, these are the moles what they have written, and 1 into 3.375 into 4, 4 into 8 into 0 0.25 at equilibrium constant 1.6875 mole per dm cube. Okay, so what will be the answer? B will be the answer. Next illustration, the volume of the reaction vessel containing an equilibrium mixture in the reaction that is SO2Cl2 and it will decompose into sulfur dioxide and chlorine is increased when equilibrium is re-established. 
what will happen the amount of sulfur dioxide will decrease the amount of sulfur dioxide dichlorine will increase the amount of chlorine will increase the amount of chlorine will remain unchanged what will be there an increase in volume for the equilibrium having first product divided by reactant the mole of so2 mole of chlorine mole of so2 cl2 into volume will increase the mole of cl2 or so2 to maintain equilibrium constant volume at constant level okay if the volume of cl2 will increase only the moles will be keep on increasing so the option c is the answer next ionic equilibrium electrolytes and non electrolytes here you can see a new terminology that is electrolytes and non electrolytes substances like acids bases and salts when fused or dissolved in water dissociate to form positively charged ions and negatively charged ions and this phenomenon is called ionization these substances are called electrolytes as they are able to conduct electricity in the fused state or in the aqueous solution if you take any acid base or salt if you are treating with water what will happen it will formed positive ions and negative ions those ions should get or those ions should conduct electricity then it will be call it as electrolytes okay substances like glucose urea sucrose etc dissolve in water without ionization either in the fused state or in aqueous solution they do not conduct electricity these are called non electrolytes okay some examples like glucose urea sucrose etc dissolve in water but without ionization ionization means the separation of positive ions and negative ions if the separation is not going to happen they does not conduct electricity only dissolving is not will conduct electricity okay without see here dissolve in water without ionization it will not conduct electricity then will be considered as non electrolytes this is the difference between electrolytes and non electrolytes once again substance which will dissolve in water it should get separated by positive ions and negative ions then it will conduct electricity will called electrolytes if substance is getting dissolved but not get separated with these two ions will not conduct any electricity so that will be call it as non electrolytes next one types of electrolytes depending upon the degree of dissociation electrolytes are classified into two types that is strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes depending upon degree of dissociation the electrolytes are classified into two types that is strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes first we'll see strong electrolytes electrolytes that undergo almost complete ionization in aqueous solution are called strong electrolytes their solutions have high electrical conductivity which electrolytes are undergo almost complete ionization to conduct electricity will be call it as strong electrolytes example strong acids like hydrochloric acid nitric acid sulfuric acid like this strong base sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide and salts sodium chloride potassium chloride magnesium sulfate and sodium acetate will also a salt and most of the examples these are the explanation of strong electrolytes and its examples next we'll see weak electrolytes electrolytes undergo only partial ionization even in dilute solutions are called weak electrolytes partial ionization okay and they have low electrical conductance increases in dilution increases in their conductance rapidly since the degree of ionization increases with dilution you know about the dilution and the concentrated solutions so whenever dilution of the solutions or substance will keep on increasing there the conductance will also increases so weak acids are carbonic acid phosphoric acid hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen cyanide and in that organic acid acetic acid and formic acid etc inorganic weak base ammonium hydroxide organic base c2h5 nh2 that is amine family these are the explanation for strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes 
with their respective examples. Okay. In the next session, we'll discuss what are acids, bases and salts, hydronium and hydroxyl ions and periodic trends in acidic properties. Next session also very much important to understand the behavior of acid, bases and salts. I hope you have understood completely whatever I have thought today. We'll meet in the next session. Thank you.